Hi, I'm Cameron Ballahan, Senior Product Manager at Google Cloud. And I'm Aaron Wanjala, a Java developer advocate here at Google Cloud. In this session, we're here to tell you five reasons why Java apps are better on Google Cloud. Let's get started. Let's do it. The last few years have been an exciting time to be a Java developer. There are compelling new language features to incorporate, and some new practices around building and testing that provide tangible new capabilities. But it's not always clear how to go about adopting these advancements, especially if you're also working on adapting to cloud computing in general. That's why today, we're here to go through five reasons why your Java apps are better off on Google Cloud. We'll start by discussing deployment methods and how Cloud Run makes it so simple to deploy services that scale right back down to zero, whether you're deploying from source or have specific needs for your containers. Cloud Run is a fully managed container-based hosting platform that lets you build and deploy code written in any language. For certain languages, Java included, Cloud Run also supports building from source, which will build the containers from build packs for you. Now our sample app for today will be a straightforward Spring Boot web service. So we'll start by curling it from start.spring.io, unzipping it, and opening it in the Cloud Shell Editor. Once we have our sample open, we'll add a sign of life to our app to help us decide if it's working properly after deployment. At this point, we are ready for an initial deploy. Now, when considering where to run my code, I prefer to ask which solution involves the least infrastructure management to meet my needs. And if I know that I want an entire web service rather than just handling a few endpoints or events, then my first stop is generally Cloud Run. To get started with that, simply run gcloud run deploy from your source directory. And that's really it. That's all you need to access source deploys. You'll be prompted to supply the source directory, region, and enable the necessary APIs to complete the deploy if you didn't add it on the command line. Now, on the other hand, if you decide that your app needs to be built with a particular builder, or you want specific steps to be taken before building and deploying, such as running your tests, then you have to define a cloudbuild.yaml to inform cloudbuild about your needs. This allows you to specify things like running tests with your build tool of choice, tagging the resulting images, or configuring the machine family that CloudBuild will use, and much more. Now, one useful practice to ensure that a release will be stable is to direct a portion of your production traffic to the new version for a period of time before completing the full release. This practice is called canary releases. And in my experience, it's often seemed compelling, but also too labor intensive to be easily adopted. This sort of release pattern can require significant experience when managed manually, but thanks to Cloud Run's traffic splitting feature, it's well within reach for teams of any size. Traffic can be controlled through the console or command line for both new and existing revisions. To do a canary release, we can simply deploy a new version of our service and configure it to serve an appropriate percentage of our traffic. Be sure to leave the canary running for a reasonably long time to gather usage data and allow the build to reveal any possible issues. Once we're confident that our canary version is stable, we can adjust it to serve the rest of our traffic and the release is complete. Now, switching gears to a specific optimization that's especially relevant for serverless Java apps, let's talk about native image compilation. Now, let's imagine that this service that we're working on is only used infrequently. So Cloud Run often scales it down to zero after a brief idle time, about 15 minutes. Now, after scaling down to zero, the first user to make a request will need to wait for a container to start up before they can be served. This is a common issue in serverless computing, known as cold starts. And one traditional solution is to keep a minimum number of instances running at all times. Now, another Java-specific option, which can be far more cost-effective, is native image compilation which can dramatically reduce the start times of your applications. As you can see here, we have a Cloud Run service that was deployed regularly and natively, and a cold start in each reveals a significant benefit. Now, where Java apps are typically turned into bytecode at compile time and then interpreted into native code at runtime, this allows you to compile directly to native executable at compile time. With native image compilation, you're effectively cutting out the JVM entirely trading off its versatility for artifact size and speed at runtime. We've spoken about this optimization earlier this year, both at I.O. and on our blog, and its role in improving your organization's cloud economics. 
That is the practice of getting the most out of your existing cloud resources. This optimization is again, by no means a silver bullet, but I see it as an important tool for teams to understand and have at hand, especially when they're considering serverless use cases. Which is why I was so excited to share earlier this year that our client libraries now support native image compilation out of the box, which minimizes the configuration required if you decide to use it in your apps. Now, I'd like to continue on from there and get a little bit more hands-on with some specific advice for people who are adopting native image compilation. One tip to further reduce the startup time and size of your app is to remove any and all unnecessary code from the class path, because anything that's discoverable will be added to the closed world conception. Spring has offered some handy configurations for doing this with some of their own modules, like Spell, the Spring Expression Language module, and XML support. Another thing that often needs tweaking is the set of classes you'd like to initialize at build time versus runtime. And as a final quality of life tip, when working on native images, let's discuss running the compiler in quick build mode. As we've discussed earlier, native image compilation can take a significant amount of time, think a few minutes. So ideally, we wouldn't have to wait for an entire compilation cycle to test each change in our artifacts when, de when developing. Essentially, quick build mode tells the compiler to use fewer optimizations, so that the time between you making a change to your native image and being able to test it is minimized. As we can see, the difference is significant especially if we're doing hundreds of these builds per day, either locally or on a test server. Now, on the topic of security, you now have the ability to cryptographically sign your builds using binary authorization. Enabling these deploy time security controls is easy in Cloud Run. You can simply navigate to your Cloud Run service on the console, go to the Details tab, and click Enable next to the Binary Authorization Enforcement section. Binary authorization will enable you to implement proactive container security in your build processes, which is an important step towards improving overall build security. You can set up specific attestations to ensure that a required activity has taken place on every image that you deploy, like, for example, a vulnerability scan. And finally, I'd like to bring out my co colleague Cameron to share some exciting news with us. Thank you, Aaron. I'm Cameron, product manager at Google Cloud. As Aaron said, we're committed to making Google Cloud the best cloud for Java developers. That includes the products and integrations you just saw and extends even further to your core Java tools and even your runtime. To that end, I'm pleased to announce that Google has joined the Eclipse Adoptium Working Group, a consortium of leaders in the Java community and makers of the Tamarin build of OpenJDK. Tamarin is one of the world's most popular JDK distributions, certified by Adoptium for heightened compatibility and security testing. As a member of Adoptium, Google will make Tamarin available across GCP products and services, providing Java customers the highest standard of enterprise security and more opportunities to create integrated, security-focused solutions. We're excited for you to try it out. Thanks, and back to you, Aaron. Thanks, Cameron. Now, we've covered a lot of ground, so how about a bit of a recap? We started from scratch by building and deploying an app from source to cloud run, and then decided that we may need a bit more control over how the container is built, so we showed a cloud build YAML that would help you do that. And then we implemented an advanced deployment pattern a canary release, thanks to Cloud Run's traffic splitting feature. And then we described how, build, how to build confidence in the security of your artifacts through signed and attested builds with binary authorization. And finally, we had our exciting announcement from Cameron around the Adoptium Working Group and how Tamarin can help us to secure our apps all the way from the JDK to production. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day.